Good morning. We are ready to do the last session of our resurrection study. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed your days in school and maybe I would have driven my bus. But I don't know. It, uh, the way things are going in this world, maybe they, they shut us down uh, this last week. And uh, I don't know, but uh, hope you're enjoying your vacation. And now uh, we're going to get into the last, the last of our study on the resurrection. We've, we, we talked about the triumphant entry of the Lord as he presented himself to Israel to, as a king. And then as he uh, took his disciples into the Last Supper, and we saw how Judas had betrayed him, uh, we took him to the the Garden of Gethsemane, from there to the trial of the, the high priests and the Sanhedrin, and then to Pilate, and, and how Pilate uh, so, so cowardly gave the Lord Jesus to the Roman soldiers and to the high priests, and uh, they crucified him. So where we left our last lesson, the Lord Jesus is uh, dead, and uh, they've decided to take the bodies of those on the cross, the Lord Jesus and, and uh, the two thieves with him. Hopefully they're dead because they broke their, broke their bones uh, of their legs. And I think it's interesting that they didn't break the Lord Jesus' leg. Uh, it said in the scripture that, that he would, uh, not a bone would be broken in the Psalms. Not a bone of his would be broken. And that's why the Passover lamb uh, the Lord told them specifically, do not break any bones on the Passover lamb. Don't break any lamb, uh, legs. Don't break, break any bones. Because it was a picture of the Lord Jesus who was not, his bones were not broken. And uh, there's a place in, in Zechariah where it says, they looked upon him whom they, whom they had pierced. Well, they pierced his side with that, with that sword or with that spear. Anyway, so now we've, we're coming to the place where it's time for them to take the Lord Jesus. And so the ladies who were there at the cross, and I, I think it's interesting, I, I didn't mention this last week, but there were the, the three ladies at the cross along with the Apostle John. And my, my feelings are that John was willing to die with the Lord Jesus. All the other disciples left him and, and fled. They, they ran away. They hid. But John, who loved the Lord Jesus with all of his heart, said, I don't care what you do with me. Put me on the cross too. I'm here. And he was right there at the foot of the cross. And the Lord Jesus looked at his mother, who was there. And he said to his mother, Woman, here's your son. And to John, son, Here's your mother. And from that time on, Mary, his mother, went to be with John and his family for the rest of her life until she passed away. And there were other Marys. One of the Marys there was, was the wife of Cleopas. <laughs> we'll we'll uh, talk about Cleopas in a minute. But anyway, so the ladies were there, and all of a sudden they saw these guys coming along with ladders, and they put him up against the, the uh, cross and they began to take the body of the Lord Jesus down and they looked and, and uh, they recognized these men. These men were part of the Sanhedrin. One of them, his name was Joseph. He was a very well-known and a very wealthy man and a, a Pharisee of the Pharisees. And, and here he was taking the body of the Lord Jesus down. And, and with him was Nicodemus. Well, Nicodemus was a Pharisee too. What were they doing? Well, the Bible tells us that both Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus were men who l l believed the Lord Jesus was the Messiah. And they were the ones that were, they did not give their assent to the crucifixion. And it was Joseph that had the, the bravery to go into Pilate and say, can we take the body of Jesus? Can we have it? And Pilate said, sure, as long as he's dead. And so they went, and, and uh, he, he got a note from the soldiers that, yeah, this, this man is dead. 
So they took the body down and very, very gently wrapped it. And uh, Joseph had a brand new tomb all made for himself and his family. It was uh, under the beautiful, beautiful garden uh, in the, uh, on the Mount of Olives. And they took this body of this precious, precious Savior, and they took it, and they embalmed him just like they normally do. They, they wrapped him with the cloths, and they wrapped his body in, in, the, spike, in the, uh, the spike nerd and the perfumes. They would wrap a little bit, put on perfumes, wrap more, put on perfumes, because they just wanted to make sure that even though the body would decay, uh, at least it would smell good. Remember, remember when, when the Lord raised Lazarus and Mary said to him, Lord, he stinks. And the Lord said, don't worry about that. So they, they laid the Lord Jesus in, in the tomb and they put a napkin over his face. Uh, remember sometimes where you see on TV somebody dies and they close the eyes. Well, they, they put their napkin over the face of the Lord Jesus and then they sealed the tomb. And Joseph and Nicodemus were relieved to think that was all over. Now, the people who hated the Lord Jesus were so, oh man, he was, he was dead. Oh, they were so joyous. It was, it was fantastic. Oh, they almost had a celebration. I think it would almost be like Christmas. Oh, man, they just were so happy he was dead. They didn't have to worry about him anymore. And they went to Pilate and they said, hey, listen now, send some soldiers over there to seal that tomb because he told us that in three days he's going to raise from the grave. We, we remember that. You know, it's really interesting. <sighs> Why didn't, this, why didn't his disciples remember that? He told them several times, in three days I'm going to raise from the dead. But the people who hated him remembered that, and they made sure that there was a contingent of soldiers. And Pilate said to them, the priests, said, you got your own soldiers, do it. And so they sent a squadron of soldiers to seal the tomb and to stand guard because they said, because he said he would raise in three days, his disciples may come and steal the body and then the, the last myth will be even worse than, than before. So they, they knew the Lord Jesus had promised to raise from the grave. So they gave him a, a squadron of soldiers to watch over his body. The Lord Jesus was in the grave for three days and three nights and... Uh, Bright and early, Sunday morning, the first day of the week. <laughs> the Lord Jesus rose from his being dead. Uh, God says God raised him from the dead, but the Lord Jesus being God, he came alive. I, he, he came out of those clothes. I would, I would think that as soon as he came out, the clothes, the strips of cloth and everything just kind of fell down. And the Lord Jesus was there. And he looked at that and he, he saw that napkin <laughs> that was on his face. And because he was a very orderly person, he was a cleanie. His mother had told him to be clean and to be, uh, to be orderly. He took that napkin and he folded it up and put it in a separate place. <laughs> and when the disciples came into the tomb, that's what they saw. But anyway, he didn't need to worry about that tomb being opened. He was God and he just came out of the tomb. Now, at the same time, the angel came down and there was a great earthquake and a great light, a light so astounding that the soldiers who saw it fainted. They, they saw this brilliant light and they, they realized something had happened and they fainted dead away. And, uh, and then the Lord came out of that tomb. <coughs> and the angel stayed right there because he knew 
the ladies were going to be coming. You know what's interesting? He took that stone. <laughs> there are three words used in each of the Gospels for how he rolled away the stone. He rolled it away. He picked it up away. He took it up away. And in the last in John, it says, <laughs> the word was used uh, as arrow. You know what an arrow is? Arrow, arrow plane. We call them arrow planes. He picked it up and threw it. Threw it up away in the hill. And the stone was gone. Well, the Lord Jesus was alive. And the angel was there. Now, the ladies decided that they were going to go early, 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 early. And so there was Mary Magdalene and Salome and, and Mary, uh, the mother of James, and some of the other ladies were, were going early because they wanted to go to the tomb to re-embalm re the body of the Lord. So at least, uh, and while they were going, they were... <laughs> It was one of those things where they, they decided to go before they really thought about it. Uh, further instance, uh, what about the soldiers? Uh, are they going to let us in? I mean, who's going to roll away the stone? Are the soldiers going to roll away the stone? You know, they, they hadn't really thought this thing. They just were so mourning and so upset with the whole thing. They wanted to, to, <laughs> they wanted to go. But when they got there, the stone was already rolled away and the soldiers were gone. Well, now, you know what happened to soldiers? They got up and they realized that the stone was gone and they probably looked in the, the tomb and saw the body was gone. They ran to the priests because they were the soldiers of the priests. And, and they said to the priest, look at, look at, the body's gone. Uh, it wasn't our fault. There was a use flashlight and <laughs> don't kill us. And the, and the priest said, no, 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 we'll just, we'll just uh, tell the world that his, his disciples came and stole the body. And that was the picture. That was it. So they uh, gave the, they bribed the soldiers to keep their mouths shut. Well, soldiers are gone. So the ladies went up to the tomb and it was empty. And then all of a sudden they saw the, the angel sitting on the tomb and, and on the row of uh, the stone and and he said, what, what are you ladies doing here? Oh, well, we've come to, to embalm the Lord Jesus. Well, so don't you know? He's not here. He's risen. Remember? He said he was going to raise. He's, he's alive. He's gone. Go tell his disciples. Well, now, Mary Magdalene, who was with him, when she saw the tomb was open, I mean, there was no stone there. I don't think she saw the angel because later on we would find out that an angel talked to her. But anyway, when she saw the tomb was open, she turned around before anything else and headed back to tell Peter. And Peter told John that the Lord's body is missing. And when they told Peter and John, of course, Peter and John realized something was going on. So they both ran. In fact, uh, John was younger than Peter. And uh, they both ran in, and John beat him. <laughs> John beat him to the tomb. They ran like crazy, beat him to the tomb, and he stopped to look inside. And Peter came in just like Peter and just bombed his way in right down into the tomb itself. And they looked, and they saw the clothes there, and the napkin laying on its side. And Peter wondered, the Bible tells us he wondered at this, but John... When John saw those clothes and he saw that napkin. Yes, he said. He's risen. John knew that. And they ran back to tell the other disciples with the ladies. The ladies went back to tell the disciples. And, and they told the disciples. But you think the disciples would believe him? They, they thought they were telling tales. Uh, Ladies, you're just seeing something. The, the disciples didn't believe it. And Mary, at the same time, went back to the tomb all by herself. And she looked in and she saw it was empty. And she saw an angel in there and he says, why are you here? Well, they've taken the, the body of my Lord. He said, he's not here, he's risen. Well, she was crying so much that... Uh, when this man stood beside, behind her, 
he, she thought he was the gardener and she turned around and said, oh sir, where have you taken his body? Where is it? And he said one thing, he said, Mary. Just the way he had said it so many times before. And she realized, it's the Lord. And she fell at his feet and worshiped him. And he said, Mary, go back and tell my, tell my disciples that I'm alive. She says, and Mary went back and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord. She had talked with him. And then you think the disciples believed her? Are you kidding? Those bunch of bumbleheads. That afternoon, Cleopas and his wife, his wife, now we know from the scripture that his wife was Mary's sister. Mary, the Lord's mother, Mary, Cleopas' wife was Mary's sister. I don't know what her name is, maybe Miriam or whatever. But anyway, they were walking along, heading home. They had probably been with the disciples and they headed home. And about that time, uh, a man walked up to them and, and walked beside them and he said, uh, oh, what are you talking about? Well, haven't you been around? Haven't you heard? Jesus of Nazareth, the, the, our Messiah, he, he's been crucified, he's dead, he's buried. And there are some, even some, he say he's, <laughs> that he's not there anymore. He's alive. Would you believe that? And so the Lord Jesus began to talk to them as they walked. He, he opened to them the scriptures and he showed them from the prophets how that Messiah must suffer and die and erase from the grave. And they got to, to listening to him and they were so excited and got close to his place and close to their home and they said come on in and have lunch with us and keep, continue this, this uh, discussion and so they sat down and, and his wife made lunch for him and, and they sat down and, and then uh, before they ate the Lord Jesus prayed he broke bread and he prayed and when he prayed, Cleopas and his wife realized who he was. And he disappeared. They got up and they ran as fast as they could back to the disciples. They said, hey, guess what? We saw him. He's, he ate with us. We saw him. He, we talked to him. The Lord Jesus is alive. He's alive. And the disciples were saying, well, the ladies tell us he's alive. Peter and John tell us he's alive. Mary Magdalene tell us he's alive. Uh, Cleopas and his wife tell us he's alive. Well, maybe he's alive. And all of a sudden, the Lord Jesus appeared in the room. They were terrified. They thought it was a ghost said, peace be to you. Oh, he said that over to them over and over and over. Peace be to you. And he <laughs> says he upbraided them for their unbelief. He said, what's the matter with you guys? I told you over and over and over I was going to rise from the dead. I was going to, I was going to, be, I was going to be arrested and killed and I was raised from the dead. Why didn't you guys believe me? And you didn't believe them. And oh, I just feel that the disciples just probably just felt like they could open a hole in the ground, fall into it, because their master was alive. And he says, hey, I'll prove it to you. Look at my hands. See the nail prints? Look at my feet. See the nail prints? Look at the side where they stuck the spear in. You know, I'm alive. I'm here. And give me some food. I'll, I'll eat it for you. They gave him a piece of fish, and he ate it. Well, they'd never seen a ghost eat before. And they began to realize that this was really the Lord Jesus. And you know, as the Lord Jesus talked to them, he opened their understanding. And for the first time in all of their life, they knew the truth. Because the Holy Spirit, the Lord Jesus himself, had opened their understanding. 
And the Lord Jesus told them, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit to you. He's going to be with you and he'll show you all things, things to come. Oh, by the way, where's Thomas? Oh, he decided he wasn't going to come. He didn't believe it. Well, you tell Thomas. You tell Thomas. I'll see him next week. So the next Sunday, uh, that's the Lord's Day. The Lord's Day. One whole week passed. Well, that's probably when the Lord Jesus went back to heaven to be with his Father and do the things that, that he was going to do. And then the next week, he appeared once more with the disciples as they met in that upper room. And this time Thomas was there. Now Thomas, they said, Thomas, the Lord's alive. What do you mean he's alive? What do you mean he's alive? He's not, he's not alive. Yes, we saw him. We saw him. We heard him. And he invited you to come with us. So Peter, or so Thomas was right there. And, uh, and when he saw the Lord Jesus, the Lord Jesus looked at him with, that, with those eyes. And the Lord Jesus said, Thomas, Go ahead, put your hand in, in the nail prints. Uh, feel the, the holes in my, in my feet. And, and here, put your hand into the hole in the, the side where I was. And Peter said, Lord, I don't need to. I believe it. My Lord and my God. And the Lord Jesus said, Peter or Thomas, blessed are these who believe without having seen you saw me and you believed which is better and then the lord jesus talked to them and told them i'm going to be around now and i will meet with you and uh, one of these days uh not sure not very distant i'm going to uh, send the holy spirit to you well i suppose we could say there but 40 days uh, the, the, in John or in Paul Paul in Corinthians chapter 15 says that over during that week over 500 people saw the Lord Jesus risen and he talked with them for 40 days he talked with them and one day he invited them all to uh, come to the Mount of Olives and uh, while he was talking to them he started to lift and ascended to heaven. And the angels came, two men, said, why are you standing looking up? And they, he said, don't you realize that this same Jesus that went into heaven is going to come back? Kids, 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 he's coming back. He's in heaven. He's alive. He's watching over us. He's praying for us. He's keeping us saved. And one of these days, hopefully, it would be wonderful if it would happen, He's going to come back to us and take us to be with himself. He says, remember, he said, I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and you receive you unto myself that where I am, you may be also. Okay, so kids, you need to be saved. You need to know the Lord Jesus as your savior. When he comes back, if you're not saved, you're going to be left. So I just really would encourage you. The Lord Jesus is alive. He died for you. He's coming back for you, and I just really want you to know that he is, he's alive. Some, some questions that maybe you want to think about. For instance, uh, uh, how, was it this, how, how was the stone removed from the tomb? Well, we talked about that. The, if, you, if you look at the, three, the, the four words in the, in the Gospels, each one of them, and eventually... It tells the, 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 stone was, <laughs> the stone was tossed up the hill. And that, that, was, that was how this tomb was removed. Uh, the stone was removed. Well, how did the Lord get out of the tomb? Well, how would he? He just went through. He went through the walls. Uh, he, his body was flesh and bone, not flesh and blood. He, doesn't, he, he was supernatural. He was wonderful. He appeared to the disciples and he disappeared and he appeared to the uh, the people at, at uh, to Cleopas and disappeared so the Lord Jesus can come go as he wants so he he did the tomb tomb wasn't didn't do anything to keep him and uh, how did he appear how did he appear to the eleven at the supper time well he just appeared just appeared how many people saw him alive read 
1 Corinthians chapter 15. And uh, Paul will tell you how many people saw him. So think about those things. And remember, next week, we have the Resurrection Sunday. We will worship the Lord Jesus as he is raised from the dead. Father in heaven, bless our hearts as we fellowship. And thank you for the time that we can get into your word and, and just uh, fellowship in the, the fact that you are a living Savior. Uh, nobody else can claim who started a religion that they're the one who started it is alive. Just, just us. We're so thankful that you are alive, taking care of us. And we look forward to the time when we will be able to get back together again as a whole class in fellowship. Thank you. In Jesus' name.